The Mario Kart series has been around for over 30 years, and there were many consistencies throughout the installments like the characters, the items, and the tracks. However, there is one track that appears in every Mario Kart game and is the crown jewel of this series. That track being... Mario Circuit. Rainbow Road has been the last track of every game, excluding the spin-offs, and has gotten many variations over the years. In this video, I will be going over every single Rainbow Road in the series, talking about the layout, obstacles, etc. I will also be putting all the tracks on a tier list, so if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And now, let's get into the one that started it all, SNES Rainbow Road. Let's start off this series with the Rainbow Road that started it all, Super Mario Kart's version. Super Mario Kart's version of Rainbow Road is easily the most basic of all the Rainbow Roads, but it was definitely an important stepping stone for the rest of the Rainbow Roads, as so many stables are included here. The Space Skybox, the Colorful Road, the Difficulty, all of that originated here. Plus, the song present on this track is easily the best song in all of Super Mario Kart. With all of that said, how is the layout? Well, let's find out. I'm going to start off by saying that all the turns on this track are 90 degree turns, and there are no guardrails anywhere. This relates to the insanely high difficulty present on this track, as Super Mario Kart's controls make it difficult to make 90 degree turns. The course starts off with a right turn with item panels with a straightaway that takes us to the first thwomps on the track. These thwomps are present all over the track and are a very good obstacle. They keep this track from being just a road in space and more like a racetrack in space. There is then a right turn followed by another right turn and two left turns, not much to say here. There is then another set of thwomps followed by two more right turns. And then after that, the road gets a little bit narrower before we have a split path. These paths are basically the same as they are both the same length and feature thwomps. But it is nice that this layout change was added. After one more right turn, the track is now over. There are also some more thwomps that guard the finish line, which is a cute detail. Overall, it is easy to see why this course became so popular. Not only does it have a unique theme and difficulty, the music and enemies made this an amazing track compared to the others in Super Mario Kart. On my tier list, I'm going to give it a solid B tier, mainly because the layout isn't super special and the controls do make this track a little bit frustrating. Really quick, if you guys want to know what each tier means, pause the video right now so you can see. Even though this course is very cool, there is a lot of room to improve. So let's get into the first sequel of this track, the one in Mario Kart 64. Mario Kart 64 was the first game in the series to be in 3D, and with it came many changes. These changes include larger tracks, only 3 laps instead of 5 like in Super Mario Kart, and replacing item panels with item boxes. Just like every game in the series, the game ends off with a rainbow road, and it is definitely different from the original one. There are many things that are consistent with the previous version, things like the track being in space and the music being amazing. Other than that, everything else is different. The road itself, the difficulty, and the obstacles are not like the original at all. To see why, let's go over the layout. The course starts off with a steep slope down with the only shortcut on the track. This shortcut isn't intentional though, and even though I won't go over unintended shortcuts on my channel, this one is way too iconic to miss. If you jump at the right spot on the slope, you can jump to a much later part of the track and save a huge chunk of time. If you decide not to risk it, the downward slope is followed by an uphill slope with a right turn, some item boxes, and a rainbow hoop. It is here where I'll mention two consistencies on the track, with the first one being the fact that there are guardrails on every part of the track. This makes the track so much easier since you don't have to really risk falling off anymore. This was a terrible change in my opinion as one of the main appeals of the original Rainbow Road was the difficulty, and this does the exact opposite. Luckily, this change did not carry over to any future Rainbow Roads. The second change is a bit more positive, as throughout the track, there will be chain chomps biting the road that you have to dodge. 
These are nice obstacles that keep this track from just being a road. They chomp towards you, which actually makes them kind of hard to dodge. Overall, the chain chomps are a good obstacle that make this track a lot better. After the right turn, you will drive straight with a soft left turn with boxes into a large dip in the track. Eventually, you will get to a 360 degree turn that goes counterclockwise. There is nothing super special on this loop, but it is nice to build up drifts while trying to avoid any upcoming chain chomps. After a loop, you will do a soft right turn with boxes into a sharp left turn. Then there is a soft right turn with more boxes with a dip and a long right turn followed by a long left turn. There is nothing really interesting to say here that wasn't already mentioned. After a long straightaway with a soft left turn, the track comes to an end. After that you do two more laps of the track ending with a final time of about 6 minutes. 4 minutes on one track is pretty insane for one Mario Kart track, so 6 minutes is definitely way too long. I don't know why the developers thought that making the track so long was a good idea, but now we forever have to live with a track that takes longer than a typical Clash Royale. This one aspect brings out the course a lot, but there are two things safe in it, with the first being the aspects. The road looks absolutely amazing, and the fireworks are nice and fun. The road does look absolutely amazing, and the fireworks are a nice touch. But one thing preventing this track from being as secure is the freeze. This song is absolutely enchanting, and definitely deserves all the praise that it gets. There's a reason that the motif from this song is in two other Rainbow Road songs. This course is going to get a solid B tier, and will go above SNES Rainbow Road as the track being easier does make it a little less frustrating to drive. I don't think that anyone can argue to put this track any higher, so now let's see how GBA handled the Rainbow Road. Mario Kart Super Circuit was definitely a step down from Mario Kart 64, as the tracks are now flat with no 3D at all. However, that did not stop Rainbow Road from being a standout once again. Before I get any comments on this, I will note that SNES Rainbow Road is in this game and gets a seat here as all the thwomps were removed. <laughs> GBA Rainbow Road is definitely an interesting entry to the Rainbow Road canon as it introduced so many things that never came back in any future iterations. Let's start off with the aesthetics, and they are pretty good as expected. I like the clouds in the sky, the dark blue skybox, and the clown car in the background. I don't know what it's from though, um, you can leave a comment on that. The start of the track has rainbow walls that protect you from falling off the track. This thankfully isn't across the whole track, so the track is relatively difficult. One thing that is consistent on this track is the ramps on the edge. So now you will be forced to jump when hitting the edge of the track. This is an interesting idea that gets more focused later on on the track. At the start you will do a right turn with coins and item boxes followed by a left turn and a sharp right turn. This turn is one of the many turns that you can actually cut by drifting at the edge thanks to the ramps. Again, this is a pretty unique idea. After there is a straightaway of coins and shooting stars that land on the track, which spin you out when hit. This is a neat idea that actually does get brought back in a much more unique way in the next Mario Kart game, but we'll discuss that more when we get to it. After a sharp, le After a sharp left turn with a straightaway featuring item boxes, we then get to a part of the track with thunder clouds that can also damage you. This is very cool as it gets clouds in the background to be featured on the track in some way. After a few more turns, you will get to the most memorable part of the track, a split path. The route on the right has boost panels, coins, and item boxes as expected, but the left path has a ton of boost panels that can lead the player making a massive jump skipping a large portion of the track. Pulling off this shortcut is super satisfying, but it is also very difficult as the path is super narrow with no guardrails. These paths recombine with a soft left turn, followed by a right turn, with both being able to be skipped by taking the left path. After that, there are a few jumps with coins and item boxes, with a 90 degree turn leading to the end of the track. There are a lot of boost panels placed on the inside path, 
So if you're bold enough, you can get a massive speed boost and potentially pass other racers last second. In short, this track is awesome. Not only does this version have unique obstacles and a good layout, it also has a pretty good gimmick that's pulled off perfectly on this track. I'm gonna give this a low A tier. The loose controls and zero verticality are holding this track back a lot, but when this track gets remade, I think it has the potential to be an absolute banger of a track. The music is sadly very unmemorable. After I force myself to listen to it for a while, I will admit that it is a good song, but it is likely the worst Rainbow Road song of all time. But you know what does have a great song? The next entry in the Rainbow Road saga. So let's finally mushroom into the last track that will be covered in this video. Mario Kart Double Dash is easily the most unique game in the whole series, with two drivers per cart and very sensitive drift controls. Like every game in the series, this game also got a Rainbow Road as the last track in the game. This version is easily the most ambitious version of Rainbow Road so far, with so many unique elements and set pieces to make this track one you will never forget. Let's start off with the road itself and it looks great. All the Rainbow Roads look good, but this version also has items floating off in the sky, and you can see Mushroom City below you, which is a very unique detail. To see why this track is so unique compared to the others previously, let's go over the layout. The course starts off with a giant ramp that drops you off to a lower part of the track with a right turn. It is here that you will find one unique factor of this version, the physics. Double Dash has some very floaty physics that make even the smallest bumps send you flying. This makes the track very difficult to play on, which is a good thing since it is the final track. After that there are two 90 degree turns and they are definitely super difficult to pull off. What? Another thing unique to Double Dash is the drifting. This makes it very easy to fall off or hit the wall without breaking. After that there are a lot of boost pads before you get to the most difficult part of the track, the spiral. This turn is very weird as it's too straight to be able to drift on, but you can't just drive straight either. There are also a lot of boost pads that make it so you can fall off very easily. If you somehow don't fall off at that turn, then you get to a wavy part of the track. Normally this part of the track would be very easy, but the loose controls make this section very difficult. After a left turn, there's a trampoline that launches you to a higher part of the track, and this is a pretty cool sequence. After that, there's a slightly wavy road with boost pads before a 540 degree turn. This turn is difficult due to the controls as mentioned earlier. After that turn, the track is now over. Before I rank this track, I will talk about the gimmick of this track, as stars rain from the sky like in Super Circuit. Unlike in Super Circuit, you can actually pick up the stars and get a pretty unfair advantage. Even though a star in first place is pretty broken, it is balanced by the fact that it can be very risky to go for a star as once again, the controls make it very difficult. This track gets everything right. The difficulty, the atmosphere, and the gameplay are perfected. I will go as far as to say that this is the hardest Rainbow Road simply due to the controls being super loose. And the music. Oh my god, it's amazing. This is likely a hot take, but this is my favorite Rainbow Road song ever. It's that good. With all that said, this is an S tier track. I think that this track is something that has never been done in the series ever, and it will be the last time we get the track this way, as the controls won't be as loose if this track ever comes back. So let's appreciate this track for the rest of humanity. Mario Kart DS, the game with mission mode, custom emblems, and busted snaking. 
This game also has one of the best set of Nitro courses, with classics like the bright and colorful Waluigi Pinball and the mechanical and dynamic TikTok clock. Among these tracks is Rainbow Road, and this is definitely a welcome addition to the Rainbow Road canon. This version is a lot more simple compared to many other Rainbow Roads in the series, but simple doesn't always mean bad, so let's get into the layout in order to see why. The start of the track has the player getting boosted forward by a boost panels on a straightaway. This is a simple yet exciting way to start the track as you are going at speeds that you will normally not be going at without a huge risk of falling off. After that, you get to a spiral with boost pads, and this is basically a copy and pasted version of the one from Mario Kart Double Dash. I don't have much else to say, as if you want to know more details, just watch the first video if you haven't already. After the spiral, you have a set piece unique to this rainbow road, and that is the loop-de-loop. -loop. This is an absolutely insane idea, as anti-gravity isn't in the series yet, but they decided to throw this in anyway, and that makes this inclusion amazing. While it does suck to get hit on the loop as it takes a century to recover, this is a set piece that is super cool regardless. After the loop, there are a few turns without much to note other than the fact that the road just ends at one point, and you land at a lower part of the track. After the turns, you will go through another loop, with this one being a corkscrew. This loop is cool for the same reasons as the first one, but this one is different enough where it doesn't feel repetitive. After that, there is one more left turn before the finish line. Like I said earlier, this is a simple track, but it is still very fun. The atmosphere with pipes and stars is nice, and the loops make this track stand out from the other Rainbow Roads in this series. There is one more thing to talk about, and that is the music. And I don't know why, but this is probably the most underrated song of all the Rainbow Road songs. No one really talks about this one, but it's super good. I've been playing this song the entirety of this section, so hopefully you actually heard how good this song is, because this song needs more love. With all of that said, this is an A tier track. The simplicity does keep it from being in the ambitious S tier, but it is still a very solid track. Now, we have gotten to one of the tracks that is considered the best, the Rainbow Road from Mario Kart Wii. This Rainbow Road is unique as the Mainline series just got a new space themed game not too long ago in the form of Mario Galaxy. This is relevant as there are a couple of references to the game, like star bits throughout the track and the good at galaxy motif in the song. Speaking of the song, it is very good, but since all the Rainbow Road songs are good, it is kind of in the middle. The earth is also underneath the whole track, and not only does this look cool, but it also makes it so that if you fall off the track, you burn up entering Earth's atmosphere. This is a cool and funny detail as it is exclusive to this track, and I think that this is excellent. Now that the aesthetics have been laid out, let's finally get into the gameplay of the track. The track starts off with a massive slope down with speed boost for the player to hit, followed by a jump to another section of the track. Since Mario Kart Wii introduced tricking to the series, there was a heavy emphasis on tricking off of ramps and this becomes very apparent later. After landing on this second section, you then perform a left turn and pass by some speed boosts before getting to another left turn. This is unique as the road is on an angle, which allows there to be a half pipe. Since half pipes were introduced into Mario Kart Wii, the developers want to include them in many places as a second option for players. Once you pass the half pipe, there's a wavy road that can give the player an insane amount of tricks. This once again is a wonderful place to show off the mechanic and is much cooler than just having boost panels in order to get speed. Once you pass the wavy road, 
you then have a lot of options. The road ahead has massive holes on the ground, with half pipes being once again an option. You can either drive around the holes, take the half pipes, or with a mushroom, you can jump over the holes. This is very cool as Rainbow Roads usually don't have any shortcuts, so it is nice that the developers found a way to add some to the track. Once you pass the holes, you then get to what is probably the hardest part of the track. Not only does the road become very narrow, but the turns are in insanely awkward angles that make it hard to stay on the track. Obviously, Rainbow Road is supposed to be difficult, but I think this is kind of overdoing it. It does make successfully nailing the turns, however, super satisfying. After nailing the turns, you then take a star launcher to get to another part of the track. Once here, you do a trick that is uniquely enough, a half pipe. I don't know why this was done, but it is still cool regardless. You then get to a split path with them both overlapping each other before jumping the player to the final turn on the track. This section is kinda like a curved cylinder as the road isn't completely flat. There are also speed boosts that you could take in order to go faster but you risk falling off, which is very important as this is the end of the course. Once you finally finish a turn, the track is now over. With how much I have praised this track for its difficulty and execution, this is an S tier track. Not as good as GCN Rainbow Road, but still amazing anyway. Now let's see if the next Rainbow Road in the series can keep the momentum going. We have finally made it to the most grand, large, and spectacular version of Rainbow Road. Actually, we haven't. I'm going to start off by talking about the first remake of a Rainbow Road in the series, SNES Rainbow Road. This version has many differences, with the first one being the addition of many ramps on the track. Since tricking became a mainstay in the series, Many retro tracks were remade with tricking in mind in order to get them to blend in with the natural courses of the game and to make the track more fun. There were ramps added at the turn after the first set of thwomps, one right after that of the U-turn, and one on the split path. The second and third ramps mentioned earlier are used as shortcuts as you can't skip a portion of the track without a mushroom, but these cuts are easier if you do have one. The other main change has to do with the thwomps, as many were combined to be one large thwomp. Also they shake the ground whenever they land on the road, and you can actually trick off with the shockwaves. This is very neat as not only do you want to avoid the thwomps, but you also want to gain as much speed as possible from after the thwomps landing. Other than the addition of coins and the difficulty being more bearable due to 7 controlling a lot better, that is it for changes. I'm gonna give this track a solid B tier. This is a great recreation of the track that added many things, but the track is too basic and simple to be placed any higher. Okay, no more stalling. Let's finally get into the masterpiece that is 3DS Rainbow Road. There are many things that this version does to stand out from the previous iterations in the series, but I think that this is best shown in the layout, so let's finally get into that. You start off the track by doing a turn around a planet, and this is actually the main theme of the track. We will be visiting many more planets later, but this is a nice introduction to the concept. After wrapping around the planet, you then do jumps to sections of the track and this is pretty fun. Not only are you performing a lot of tricks, but you also are going up, making this even more exciting. Once you reach the top of the ramps, you then jump to a more fragmented section of road, but this time, it circles around another planet. This part being fragmented and curved means that there are two ways to perform this section. You can drift onto every platform, but you can also trick off of every ramp, but risk falling off. This gives the player a risk versus reward factor, as they can either play it safe, or they can risk it in order to get more speed. 
After the jumps, you drive straight for a bit before reaching a mushroom. There isn't much to say about this, but the variety is nice. You then get to a wavy road that only waves on the side, not like the Wii version. I think that this was done since the wavy road is like the Wii version later on the track, so they likely didn't want to make this repetitive. Once the first wavy road is passed, you finally reach the first checkpoint of the track. This is one of the things that this track does to differentiate itself from the other versions, which was to have the track be one massive lap. This was a great idea that makes tracks like this one feel so much more alive, like the player is on a journey. Once you pass the checkpoint, you then do a sharp right turn that leads to the first of many massive gliding sections on the track. There isn't anything to hit while gliding, but you get a first in the Rainbow Road series, as you don't drive on a rainbow road. Instead, you drive on a planetary ring with massive divots in it, and this is all really cool. This was the point that the developers realized that they aren't restricted to just a rainbow road, and they can do many cool things. We will see this become a lot more apparent in the Mario Kart 8 version of this track, but that is an idea that we will get to later. After a long turn on the ring with boost pads appearing later, you take another glider and glide to a star launcher. This doesn't really add anything, but it is better than just us not have it at all. Once you land, you do a few turns with boost pads on the edge. These make the player go faster, which does add a bit of difficulty, as the track isn't really that difficult. Once you pass the turns, you will get to the second Ravy Road, and this one has massive holes throughout the entirety of it. If you do fall off here, it is okay as staying on the road or falling off leads you to another major set piece of the track, the moon. This section has many craters for the player to trick off of and chop balls that the player needs to dodge. These two elements make this section very chaotic and stressful as you do need to balance speed or safety. After the moon, you pass the second checkpoint and reach section 3. This one starts off by having conveyors on the floor before jumping the player onto a cylinder you drive inside. The cylinder is filled with boost pads the player needs to hit before getting to a section with multiple routes. You can either jump from road to road with many ramps on it, or you can glide over everything and hit star rings that boost your speed while dodging asteroids. This is easily the coolest gliding section as it lasts the longest and has you maneuvering many different obstacles that make you really feel like you are flying. Once you finally land you do one more turn, but this isn't just any turn as it is angled vertically an insane amount. This actually opens up the only shortcut on the track as you can jump at the right spot and cut off a part of the track. This saves a good amount of time, but it is at the end, so you could throw your race doing this. But once you do one more jump, the track is now over. Considering how much I have yapped about this version, it is apparent that I love this track. It just has so many cool elements that make it a joy to race on and revisit. And with that, this deserves an S tier, at the very top. I don't think anything could top it in my opinion. Before we start this final stretch of this journey, I am going to do something special for this part of the video, and that is the order that I will be reviewing the courses. Instead of going over them in chronological order, I will instead be going over them by my personal ranking of all of them, just so that this part isn't predictable like the first two parts were. With that being said, just keep in mind that this list that I have is my personal opinion, so if you agree or disagree with anything, feel free to leave your opinions in the comments. Okay, it is finally time to jump into the 5th best Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 8, with that one being... I don't think that there are many people that consider this their favorite Rainbow Road in this game, so I don't think that this placement will be very controversial, but at number 5 we have SNES Rainbow Road. I did already go over the first remake of this track before, so all of the changes that were in that version are still here. 
the shockwaves, the larger thwomps, the added ramps, all of that was added to this version of the track. With that said, there are a few changes made to this version of the track that are worth mentioning. First off, the aesthetics are slightly different, as instead of being in space, the road is instead above a lake, with toad houses and rounded mountains nearby. I do really like this change, as there are so many rainbow roads in this game, and three of them take place in space. This simple change does make the track stand out more from the others in this game. Another change made to this track is that the shockwaves from the thwomps are a lot stronger now, meaning that the tricks that the player can perform are much higher and much more satisfying. Besides those changes, there isn't anything new that we haven't already seen from this track before. So overall, this track isn't bad, but I think that the problem is that there are other rainbow roads in this game that have way more intricate layouts than this simple square. The obstacles and aesthetics are nice, but they don't really compare to the other rainbow roads in this game. I'm gonna give this track a solid B tier once again. The changes do make it go above the 7 version of the track, but it isn't an A tier track. I know that this section was kinda short, but I have discussed this version of the track 2 times before, so I don't think that there is a reason to talk about it much more. Also, I promise that the other sections of this video will be a lot longer than this one. At number 4, we have the last track of the entire base game of Mario Kart 8. That being N64 Rainbow Road. This is the track on this list that has received the most amount of changes, and received them in pretty massive areas, so let's talk about it. The biggest and most controversial change among fans is that the track got changed into a one lap track, so now the track is a lot shorter than the original. This change is a good one as the course being too long is the reason why this track was somewhat hated in its original version. The main problem, at least for me, is the fact that the track feels a bit too short. Like, I feel like there should be an extra 15 to 30 seconds on the track. I do prefer a track that is a little too short than a track that is way too long. So I think that this version is automatically a better version than the original. One thing that is a lot less controversial about this track is the changes to the aesthetics, as most people agree that they were amazing. The gold borders and the neon lights added to the edges of this track make the road literally shine, and it is very appealing. There is a reason that the deluxe version of Mario Kart 8 uses this track as the background track for the box art. Not only that, but the track isn't in space once again but is instead above a city filled with golden lights. These lights complement the road perfectly, as the road's lights are very similar to the lights in the city. And that is all I have to say about the visual side of things, so let's get back into gameplay differences, starting with the chomp balls. The chain chomps that bit the road on the original version of the track are now chomp balls that shake the road. I do like this change, as not only do I think that the extra trick opportunities are nice, but the tricking can lead to the chomp balls being difficult obstacles even in the air, as tricking gives the player airtime. To be more specific, the chomps were added to only be in the section after the first right turn, where there is one present, and after the 360 degree turn, where there are two present. Another major gameplay change that will be mentioned is the anti-gravity sections, as there are so many present on this remake. There are four to be exact, with one at the very start during the dip, one at the right turn after the glider that was added after the dip, one with the 360 degree turn, and one for the entire last lap. I also do like how the track is tilted in order for the anti-gravity to be more dramatic. Like I have mentioned a few moments ago, there were also gliders added to the track, with one being after a large dip at the beginning, and one at the very end of the track. 
I think that these are great additions to the track as they do break up the track a good amount. One more thing that I am realizing as I am recording the audio for this video is the fact that the characters in the background of the aesthetics are now replaced with fireworks and this is really cool. Okay, as I'm editing this video right now, I just realized one very important thing I just forgot about N64 Rainbow Road, and that is the train. Like, despite it being in the track's thumbnail, I completely forgot to talk about it. Basically, as you're driving on the track, a train actually passes by and drops coins on the track, and this is a really good way to make the track stand out a bit more. I'm sorry I wasn't able to have this as an official part of the video, but at least I remembered to add it somewhere. With all of these cool additions added to the track, why is this at number 4? Well, not only is it due to the short length as mentioned earlier, but the track doesn't have any super unique gameplay like the other Rainbow Roads that will be mentioned shortly. This track is going to be at the very top of A tier and is currently the most improved remake on the list. This remake made so many great decisions to the track and there are only a few things holding it out of S tier. Still though, this track is still excellent and was definitely a great way to end off the base game of Mario Kart 8. At number 3, we have a very controversial pick, as many people probably have this at the very bottom of their lists, but we have 8 Rainbow Road. This track is infamous for betraying what a Rainbow Road should be, as it includes a lot of man-made elements that class with the mystery that was the other Rainbow Roads. I said in the 3DS section before that they were trying to make the track not just a Rainbow Road and include more unique elements, but many people, including me somewhat, think that they went a bit too far with this version. Everything in this version of Rainbow Road is mechanized and modernized, from the starting line, to the road itself, to the literal spaceship on the track design. A lot of the appeal that made Rainbow Road special in the first place is mostly gone here. While many people despise this change, I think that it is a neat idea since they were trying something new, and new isn't always a bad thing. There is a reason why 3DS Rainbow Road is one of the fan favorites in this series. The problem for me is that it wasn't executed the best. In order to see why, let's briefly go over the layout. The start of the track has the player driving straight before having the player perform two hairpin turns before going off of a glider. These turns are super difficult as the turns are very sharp, but this is a good thing as Rainbow Road should be very difficult. I will briefly mention the fact that the other Rainbow Roads in this game aren't too terribly difficult compared to the others in this series, but I won't blame the tracks themselves for this as it is likely due to Mario Kart 8 controlling smooth as butter. Anyway, after the glider the player lands on a spaceship and this is the main highlight of the track. While this addition is cool, the gameplay is something that we have seen before as it is just a conveyor belt going in opposite directions in Toad Factory style. Rest in peace, Toad Factory. I hope that you come back in the next Mario Kart game. I think that a spaceship could have had so much more potential, as we could be enclosed in one completely and see all of the cool things in spaceships, like equipment or the pilot seat. Anyway, what we got is still pretty neat regardless. After that, the player has the option of taking two gliders that lead to different pathways that overlap each other. This is actually my favorite part of the track, not because the roads are super cool as they are just anti-gravity roads with shortcuts and a shortcut halfway through both, but it is the fact that it is possible and not very difficult to jump between the two roads. If you jump off the road at the right spot, you can land to the other road, and this is way faster than driving the normal route. Even though this was probably not intentional, as there is no indication to jump at these areas, I think that this makes the track super memorable, and highlights what anti-gravity can do wonderfully. After the split paths recombine, the player then does a very long and sharp turn towards the finish line. There were also boost pads at the edges of the road in order to make this section even more difficult. And once that turn is finished, the track is now over. Overall, I do see why people don't really like this track very much. 
Not only was it coming off the insanely high bar set by Mario Kart 7's version of Rainbow Road, but the theme and layout are mostly unmemorable compared to the other versions of the track. Despite that, I do think that being able to jump the roads and the super unique mechanized feel land this a spot in A tier. One more thing that I will mention is the music, and as expected by this point, it's fantastic. The electric guitar, with what sounds like a flute, makes the song sound super electric and wonderful in a majestic way, just like how all the Rainbow Roads sound in the series. We are now left with the top 2 Rainbow Roads in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and they are actually a bit more special than the others in this game. You see, when Mario Kart 8 first came out in 2014, there were only 2 Rainbow Roads in the game, which were 8's Rainbow Road and N64 Rainbow Road. However, in 2015, when Mario Kart 8 got its own DLC, they brought over SNES Rainbow Road as a part of it. That brought the amount of Rainbow Roads in the game up to 3. Finally, in 2022, after 5 years of getting nothing, the port of Mario Kart 8 on the Switch being Mario Kart 8 Deluxe got DLC of its own, which doubled the course count from 48 to 96. Two of these tracks are 3DS and Wii Rainbow Road, and they were both fantastic in their original iterations. This made the idea that they were the ones that would be added to the Booster Course Pass make sense. Of these two Rainbow Roads, I am giving second place to... 3DS Rainbow Road. This might be a bit of a surprise as the original version of the track is, in my opinion, the best Rainbow Road of all time, but this version did definitely downgrade a lot of things that make this an overall worst version. First off, I'm going to talk about the road itself, as this version does two things that I feel make the track worse. I'm going to start off with the lesser of the two problems, which is the fact that the track is much wider than the original. I think that this was done since this was originally a Mario Kart Tour track, but I think that makes the track even easier, despite the fact that the track was easier than most of the Rainbow Roads in the series. However, it doesn't matter as much as if you were good on the original, you were never falling off much to begin with. The second change is something I can't really stand, and that is the road's color. I feel that the road looks a bit too blue, and if you look at it, I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from. You barely see any of the warmer colors on the road, and this is a bad thing as the aesthetic relies on the road being rainbow in order to work. Also, if you never thought about it, you can't really unsee it now. You're welcome. One more visual change that is worse is the road's elevation at certain points, as it isn't as high. Take that final turn as an example. On the original, it was super vertical and felt very dramatic. On this version though, it feels a lot more lame as it is more horizontal. This also means that that cool cut that you can perform at the end on the original is gone as well. One more change I will point out is the gliding, as it feels much more stiff in this version. I know that this is a problem with the Mario Kart engine, as it was made to make the gameplay feel more streamlined and fast-paced, but it does take away from the track a good amount, as there are a lot of gliders on this track. I know I have talked about a lot of minor, nitpicky things as my reasoning for this track getting second, but you guys gotta remember that this was the best Rainbow Road in the series, and potentially the best course of all time. So despite the fact that this track did lose a lot of things, it still goes into S tier. The layout with the music and the ambition are all still present in this version of the track, so it won't be dropping a tier, it'll just be at the very bottom. Okay, I'm going to jump straight into the point as we all know what number 1 is, and it is Wii's Rainbow Road. Just like 3DS Rainbow Road in this game, there are changes that I don't really like, and those make this lower than the original version of the track, 
but I think that there are some changes that were made for the better and make this track go above 3DS Rainbow Road, at least in this game. I'm going to get the negatives out of the way by starting off by talking about the guardrails. For some reason, there were guardrails added to the track and they make the track a bit easier. Considering that Rainbow Road should be a difficult gauntlet that people should suffer on, this is a bad change to the track. However, like the difficulty nerf on 3DS Rainbow Road, this isn't a terrible change as the controls are better and you won't be falling off that often anyway. Other than that though, the track is actually intact. Even the burn effect from falling off the stage is still here, despite the fact that Lakitu picks you up immediately in this game. The road does use a more grid-like aesthetic like most of the other Rainbow Roads in this game, but at least the road does still look like a rainbow unlike 3DS Rainbow Road in this game. The last change I will bring up is the anti-gravity, and it is great. I actually almost forgot to mention this earlier, but 3DS Rainbow Road got anti-gravity added to the moon section of the track, which is a nice reference to there being less gravity on the moon, but the gameplay is really just the same thing. Here, however, the anti-gravity is present on the whole track. This means that you can bump into racers in order to add more speed to the track, which makes the track even more difficult. This almost makes up for the fact that there were added railings to the track as it does bring back some of the difficulty to the track. And that is it for major changes to the track. It didn't change very much like 3DS Rainbow Road, but it was able to stay a very strong track despite the changes. It will go right below the original iteration as a great track and a very great way to end all of Mario Kart 8 and our series. If you are still here somehow, thank you so much for staying till the end. I enjoyed going through the entire series and seeing how Rainbow Road evolved over time, so please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Or you could just comment something that you disagree with, it's your choice. Anyway, expect videos that are not completely based on one track in the future, as I do have some cool and unique ideas coming up, so please look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the racetrack. Goodbye.